report. Um, we got a call yesterday that Johnny Hammond had a pretty severe heart attack. If you don't know who that, that is, that's uh, uh, Patricia Cross's father. And they weren't expecting to make the night. Ham and I went up there to see uh, to see them be with the family as late as we could. And uh, my understanding is that he had a pretty good night, but it was a pretty bad heart attack. And we've been praying for Johnny a long time. He has a lot of health conditions. So be in prayer for that. And then we've been praying for Gracie Lee also, uh, having that such a severe uh, ear infection back in the hospital again. So many times this child's been in the hospital with this. She's got to come home, so we want to praise God for that. And Pam woke up with a migraine. So that's why Brother Kevin was up there singing this morning. But don't you appreciate Brother Kevin stepping up? We just appreciate him so very much. He's a fine, fine fellow. Don't forget the Godwin family. The Godwin family lost up. Uh, uh, Terry Ray. Terry Ray Godwin passed away. I see his brother. I'm praying for the end. Many, many prayer concerns. Well, we're going to be looking at a, a really a simple message this morning, but you know the, the gospel is not that complicated. We looked last week at how you have to come as a little child. And you might want to come... Uh, uh, as a grown man or a grown woman in your own terms, but you're not going to go to heaven that way. You must come as a little child. And you must know who you're coming to. You need to know who Jesus is. And then tomorrow, next week, we're going to wind this up with is you must be born again. These are real simple things, but sometimes we need to get back to the simple thing. But who, just who is Jesus? Luke chapter 20, beginning at verse 39, we read, then some of the scribes answered and said, Teacher, you have spoken well. But after that, they dared not question him anymore. And he said to them, How can they say that Christ, uh, and he said to them, How can they say that Christ is the son of David? Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore David calls him Lord. How is he then his son? Pray with me as we study God's word. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to come this morning to look at the simple truths of your word, to try to seek, to understand just who Jesus is. Father, uh, these Pharisees, uh, they're struggling with it. The Herodians, they're struggling with it. The scribes, they're struggling with it. In the world we live in today, so many want to see him as a fine man and a good teacher. That's not enough. Father, help us to see clearly as he teaches these men exactly who he is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who is he? It says, Then some of the scribes answered and said, Teacher, you have spoken well. Jesus has come to Jerusalem. This is the end of his ministry for the last time. He's in Jerusalem with much fanfare. Remember, Hosanna, Hosanna. Uh, as, they, as he went in, they threw the palm leaves down, spread their coats out. But then he kind of, like some people would say he messed up. I, I think whatever Jesus does is right. Amen. But he goes to the temple and he cleanses the temple. He runs out all the merchants out of the temple. Those selling sacrifices. Those exchanging the monies. And I know some, one of our kids may come up to you today and say, Would you like to buy a Boston bus? Like, we don't have to run them out of the church. Because what these people were doing was not just selling something, but they were <laughs> cheating the people. And Jesus cleansed the temple. Then uh, 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 the Pharisees came to him. This is, this is some setting. And they, the Pharisees wanted to know, what authority do you have to cleanse this temple? What, what's your authority? Then the Herodians, uh, as a setting, came to him and said, who should we pay taxes to? Remember what he said? Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. Caesar. And unto God that which is uh, that, that was right before this as well. And, and, and then the, the Sadducees came to him because they didn't believe in the resurrection, you remember, our, our angels. And, and they had a question for him on things they didn't like. They didn't want to believe and they didn't like. Power, money, matters of faith. You know what a lot of questions are about even to this day. Even to this day. And they all figured they had, they had Jesus. They, 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 they had him over a barrel. The, the, the Pharisees says, oh, we got him now. And then the, the Herodians said, oh, we got him now. And the Sadducees said, oh, we got him now. Jesus answered every one of their questions. And it says, we read in our text, Teacher, you have spoken well. But after that, they dared not question him anymore. They finally realized they were out of their league. They weren't going to trap the Lord Jesus Christ. 
you know what? I'm glad we have a God that's smarter than we are. Amen. We need to always remember that. We have a God who is smarter than we are. But Jesus now has a question for them. And He asks it in verse 41. He says to them, How can they say that the Christ is the Son of David? Again, thinking on their questions. First one was the Pharisees. Remember, their question was all about power. The Herodians, their question was all about money. The uh, Sadducees, their question was all about things they did not like. But then Jesus has a question, and His question is all about what the Bible says. What the Bible says. It's not about power, it's not about money, and it's not about uh, what we like or we don't like, but it's what the Bible says. I wonder how many times in churches we have problems with power. You think ever? I wonder how many times in churches we have problems with money. Well, <coughs> Brother Billy Joe, could we use some more? <laughs> If somebody got a check, but we'll write, we can use some more. <laughs> but we don't argue. We haven't been arguing about money. Isn't that great? Amen. But I have been in churches where money was argued about. I wonder how many times in churches there's been questions about what this group likes or what this group doesn't like. But you know, really, the only questions that we need to ask in, in the church, the only real difference is we need to come up against is what does the Bible say? Amen. I remember I was in a house one time and uh, we were talking about an issue and this fellow said, well, preacher, you, 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 just, you just decide about what the Bible says. I, I'm just telling you what I was always taught. I'd rather know what the Bible says than what I was always taught. Amen. So much more important to know what the Bible says. And that's what his question is all about. He says, let me ask you a question, but let me ask you a question right from the Word of God. Verse 42. Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, that would make it the Word of God, would it? The Lord said to my Lord. That's important. Let's read that again. The Lord said to my Lord. Let's read that together. The Lord said to my Lord. And what did he say? Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstools. Okay, now if you were to study, and hopefully we all have, but if you were to study or think on the nation of Israel in the days of Christ, they had some heroes. They had some Old Testament heroes that they just adored. They quoted Isaiah all the time. How many think Isaiah is a pretty cool guy? And we quote him. The New Testament quotes him quite often. But they did too. Uh, uh, they quoted Jeremiah all the time. Because not that his message was that pleasant. Jeremiah's message was all about wrath. But they had learned from the days of Jeremiah. At least some things. They, uh, they, uh, uh, they revered Elijah and was looking for him to come. Remember the question is, 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 when is Elijah to come? And, and so they revered Elijah. And Moses was the most. They just thought when he spoke of Moses, oh, it was great, Moses, Moses, Moses. But their most beloved hero of the Old Testament was none other than King David. Because King David represented a kingdom. A kingdom that they wanted to see again. Again, let's move over in our Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 7. prophet has come to David and speaking to David. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and no more shall the sons of wickedness oppress them as previously. Since the time that I of the, of the uh, commanded the judges to be over my people Israel and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also, the Lord tells you that He will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish His kingdom. And He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of His kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And if he commi commits iniquity, I will chasten him with a with a rod, and shall not depart from him, as I took as I took as I as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be and uh, shall be established forever. Say forever. Forever. Now this, this verse, this, this, these words from the prophet to David very much speak about Solomon. 
And they say, now Solomon's going to build you a temple, and he did. And he's going to be your son. He's going to reign and, and, and ancestors reign. But when it starts talking about this kingdom to last forever, the kingdom that lasts forever is sitting right here today. Somebody say amen to that. <coughs> You need to be sitting right. We are part of that kingdom. And when, 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 when the Jews thought about King David, one of the reasons why they were so excited with King David because it's because King David represented a kingdom. And if they had a kingdom, then they would be like that. They would get what they deserve and everything would be great. And above all, if this kingdom would come now, above all, what they would get would be to be rid of the Romans. In the days of Christ, they wanted nothing more than to be rid of the Romans. If we could just get rid of these Romans and everything would be fine. You know, uh, we have some problems in this world. We're fighting two wars, difficulties. Anybody have any e economic issues? <laughs> any struggles uh, uh, with the economy? We have problems. And you know, we always, and, and, and I know I, it, for years I, I lived with this. You know, one of these days, everything's just going to get all right and it's going to be smooth sailing. One of these days, everything's going to get all right and it's going to be smooth sailing. Well, 53 years, it hasn't been really smooth sailing yet. How many know what I'm talking about? Really hasn't been smooth sailing yet. Okay. But they just thought, if we could just get rid of these Romans, they need to do more than get rid of the Romans. They need to get rid of a sin problem in their life. By the way, if you're here today and you're not saved, you need to get rid of a sin problem in your life today. Amen. Amen. Okay, so their real issue about this kingdom was hey, how can we have a kingdom set up where we won't be under these Romans anymore where everything will be great and, and we can finally get what we deserve. And, you know, anytime I hear somebody say, I want what I deserve, I want to walk away from them because they just might get it. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to be around them if they got what they deserve because I'm glad I don't get what I deserve. I'm glad I get what Jesus deserves. Amen? Amen. Okay, well, let's move on over to Acts chapter 1. So you say, well, that's Old Testament, brother. And surely they learned something by now. Well, not really, because this is after uh, Jesus has been crucified. This is after Jesus has been buried. This is after Jesus has risen from the dead. And he's fixing to ascend to heaven. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. And we read these words. Therefore, when they had come together, this is his disciples with Jesus, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? What are they asking? Will you uh, sit on David's throne? At this time, when you sit on David's throne, Lord, this is, are you going to set up the kingdom now, Lord? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but, you shall, you, but when you shall receive power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall bear witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. See, when they, get, when they receive the Holy Spirit, but we have, if you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm excited that that's true. Amen. Come on. I'm excited that's true. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, when they receive the Holy Spirit, and they begin to uh, think about these verses, they begin to think about the kingdom, they come to a conclusion. The apostles come to a conclusion. We're not supposed to kill the Romans. We're supposed to see the Romans saved. Paul wrote a book. Let's see. It's right after Acts. What's it called? Anybody remember? What's that right after Acts? It's called Romans. Romans. And it's called Romans because it's written to the Romans. Romans. Okay. Paul spent his, his last days. We don't know how Paul was killed. By the way, we're studying that on Sunday evening. We're wrapping that up this week. Uh, if you want to hear about the last recorded incidents of the Apostle Paul, come back tonight. But he spends his last days where? Does anybody know where he spends his last days? In Rome. You see, they learn with the filling of the Holy Spirit, with the beginning of the church, with understanding what the kingdom of God really is. It's not a physical throne on this earth anymore. It's one day we get to go to heaven. One day we get to sit with them. Well, we get to walk the streets of gold. One day we get all these things. And so they, they begin to see we don't need to kill the Romans. We need to see the Romans saved. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. Today the kingdom of heaven is about us reaching this world for the Lord Jesus Christ. We just finished our, our, uh, our, our, our Christmas offering for missions and, and praise God. That money's going to go out to reach the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's part of the kingdom coming. We pray that in the Lord's prayer. Okay, but let's get back to Jesus' question. Again, verse 41. And he said to them, How can they say 
that the Christ is the son of David. Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, Lord, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. These are the words of Psalm 110. And they, they bring out the most beloved way that the Messiah was spoken of in Jesus' day. If you wanted to talk about the Messiah and you want everybody to be excited about him coming, they would say, the son of David. And the reason why that was so exciting is because when they said the son of David, they'd all think about the, this kingdom being set up, and of course they'd all think about getting rid of the Romans. Okay, of course they were mistaken on that part, but that's what they would think. And so, son of David was their most favorite way to refer to the Messiah. As a matter of fact, listen to Mark chapter 10, verse 47. And when he heard this, this is a blind man. Say blind man. Blind man. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What does he call Jesus? Son of who? David. Son of David, have mercy on me. This blind man sees that this is the son of David. This blind man sees that he's the Messiah. Now, where did he learn this? He learned it the same place that the Pharisees should have learned it, the same place the Rhodians and the Sadducees should learn. He learned it from the Word of God. The Bible says, the seed of David shall have an eternal kingdom. Okay. So he says, now, son of David, have mercy on me. And you know what Jesus did? He, he healed him. Isn't that great? Amen. Okay. Now, he learned it from a study of God's Word. Now, let's think. We're trying to get figure out who this Jesus is. Who is he? And he said, he's using this song. But you know, he once asked his disciples. He asked his disciples a question. We read that in, in, in Matthew chapter 16. Let's see, he's on over there. Look at verse 13. <laughs> It says, when Jesus came to the regions of Caesarea Philippi, he asked, he, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am, the Son of Man am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's exciting. Okay? So he asked his disciples, who, who the people say that I am? They had all these, all these heroes. You could be one of these heroes. Who do y'all say that I am? Well, you're the Messiah. You're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. But now I want to think about another question. Uh, a question that the religious people had. And, and we, we would find that over in Mark chapter 2. Let's heave over to Mark chapter 2. Beginning in verse... And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. What's happened is they broke through the ceiling and lowered the man down into the into the Peter's house. Do you remember that? Why does this man speak blas uh, blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his heart that they were reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason these things uh, about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out of the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never saw anything like this. Boy, that's an understatement, isn't it? Okay. Jesus says... Who do you believe I am? Or, uh, uh, and they said, we believe you're the Christ. But these people's question is not, they're, they, they're asking Jesus basically, who do you think you are? They said, what are you saying? You're saying your sins are forgiven this man? Don't you know that there's only one, one uh, entity that can forgive sins, and that's God. And they're, they're asking in their heart, Jesus knows your heart. Amen. They're asking in their heart, who do you think you are, Jesus? Just who do you think you are? Okay? And uh, 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 Jesus is going to answer their questions. Verse 41, we go back again. And he said to them, How can they say that Christ is the Son of David? Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. 
David himself, their hero, spoke in the book of Psalms. And uh, that, that's the one they love the most. And he said this statement. The Lord said to my Lord. Now let's think about that because that's very important. The Lord. That would be God the Father. God. My. The word my. Who is that? That's David. He's the one writing the song. The Lord said to my, my what? My Lord. Who's the second Lord? The Messiah. Okay? The Messiah is a descendant of David. And so David says to his descendant, Lord. And what, I'll tell you, what does the word Lord mean? Master. master. David says to his descendant, Master. But now if we think for a second. Over in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. This is the, anybody remember what this is called? There's ten rules. What do we call those? What is, what's it called? Ten commandments. ten commandments. And one of them that all us parents like for our children to memorize. Okay? Verse 12, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. See, I'm supposed to honor and revere my father. Right? I'm supposed to honor my ancestors because if it wasn't for my ancestors, I wouldn't be here. And if it wasn't for my parents, I wouldn't have had good food and I probably had too much. <laughs> but I wouldn't have had good food and I wouldn't have had a place to, place to live and I wouldn't have been sent to school because on my own I wouldn't have wanted to go. And I'm supposed to an, uh, honor my ancestors and, and my parents should have honored their ancestors and, they, and on and on and on. The way it works, we're supposed to honor our ancestors. But yet we see here, David is not honoring his ancestors, he's honoring his descendants. And that would go against even the Ten Commandments unless David knew that his descendant was going to be his Lord. And so this is a promise of the Messiah. And so he said, your, your, your hero David said, he said to y'all, listen, this descendant that will set up this everlasting kingdom, he is my master. Now that's unusual for the child to say that about the descendant. I mean, for the parent to say that about the descendant. Everybody following? Or kind of following? I said this was simple. Maybe it's not as simple as I thought. <laughs> Let, let's see if, um, if we can better understand what Jesus is saying to these men. Over in John chapter 8. Beginning at verse... 51. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my words, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and you say, If anyone keeps my words, he shall never taste death. And you are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? Remember I told you that was their question. Who do you think you are? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. If my father honors me, of whom you say that he is your God, uh, you have uh, not known him, but I know him, and I say, I do not, I, and if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham re rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, now you'll notice that's capitalized because that's a big statement. What does it say? Those two little words. I, I am. am. Before Abraham was, I am. Does anybody know what that, what that means? He just claimed to be who? God. God. Okay. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the, uh, of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Now, Throughout the gospel message, we hear this statement. If you have ears to hear and eyes to see. 
They have heard so much. They have seen so much. He has plainly claimed who he was. He says, before Abraham was, I am. Which means, he's God. And they know that because it says in the Bible, after he said it, they picked up stones to kill him. Because they were upset because of what he said. And he said, I am God. Okay? And so they're, they're, they have heard what who he claims to be. Again and again they have heard him say, this is who I am. But they can't hear it. They've seen him do things that only God could do. Remember they said, who do you think you are to forgive sins? And Jesus said, let me just show you something. You say I can't save your sins and forgive him. How about this? Can I say to the crippled man, get up and walk? What did the crippled man do? Got up and walk. See, they've seen it. They've heard it. But they can't see. And they can't hear. He says in 41, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You see, they, they keep wondering, how are we going to get rid of these Romans? How are we going to get rid of these Romans? They're the fulfillment of all they wanted. All their promises that they wanted. All the freedoms that they wanted. Everything that they desired was standing right in front of them. He was right there. His name was Jesus. And they were plotting to kill him. And he's trying to get across. You know, we have a good God. Amen. He knows their hearts. He knows what they have planned for him. And yet he is doing all he can to try to reach them with the understanding. Don't you know who I am? Does anybody remember what they called him? Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. And he's trying to get across them. Don't you guys know who I am? But they have issues. Oh Lord, you know, if, you, if people just didn't have issues. Issues are power. The issues are money. The issues are lights. And the issues are don't lights. You know, a lot of people have issues. People might not mind being saved, but they don't want to surrender their life. And, and so often, you know what people don't want to do? What lost people don't want to do, they don't want to give up a day off. You know how I know that? I used to be lost. And one thing I didn't like about church is when it met. Sunday morning. I wanted to be what? Or. 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 That's how. What I didn't want to be was sitting where you are. Had issues. These men have issues. But Jesus wants them to hear. He says, I've showed you again and again. I've told you again and again. And then he says in verse 41, uh, 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 sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Everything you wanted, it's right here. Everything you want, it's right here. All your fulfillment, it's right here. But they can't hear it. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, we read these words. Most everybody probably knows this verse. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Jesus said, told them. By the way, who was Jesus? God. What did God say, God? God. And He's talked to them. They can't hear Him. You remember His question, who do, who do men say that I am? We didn't look at Jesus' response. Peter said, you're the Christ, you're the Messiah, you're the son of David, the son of the Most High God. Jesus' response to that in Matthew 16, 17, listen very carefully. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon bar -Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. By the way, if God speaks to you, that is the word of God. And what God said to him is recorded in our Bible. So Peter heard it from God, and it was the Word of God, and He spoke the Word of God, and He believed the Word of God, and if you don't get saved today, you've got to do the same thing. Probably use an amen there. Amen. The Word of God in Genesis speaks of Jesus. Abraham knew Jesus. Moses spoke of Jesus. David was part of Him. The prophets looked for Him. Peter recognized Him. The leper knew, only you can make me clean. The blind man saw Him. That's a miracle. Several centurions, Romans, recognized him. The demons ran from him. Paul, 
made him in a great light. And he stood the temple with these religious men. And they couldn't even see him. And they couldn't even hear him. That has to be the saddest story of all time. They couldn't see him. And they couldn't hear him. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Really a verse about the church, but it sure is challenging at an invitation as well. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant him to sit with me on my, what does it say there? Throne. Throne. There's that kingdom. Also, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Can you see? Do you hear? We're all sinners. We're all sinners. You know it. I knew it when I was lost. I knew I, knew, I, knew I was in trouble. We're all sinners. There's none that are good. There we're all sheep gone astray. I knew that in my heart I would say something else. I would say, no, no, I'm all right. I'm a good guy. I, 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 I don't do real bad things. But I knew in my heart I was in trouble. Can you see? Do you hear? That without Jesus, we're, we're, we're not going to make it. Can you see and do you hear that? Do you ever, do, 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 as a lost man, I would lay in bed and think about what's going to happen after I die, and I would be terrified of it. Because in my heart, I knew that the wages of sin was death. The wages of sin is what? Yeah. Eternal death, and I knew it. Can you see and do you hear that Jesus came and He died for you? He was God. He was in heaven and He came. He took the form of a man, humbled Himself, became obedient to death, even the death of the cross, and that we buried Him. And He rose from the dead because He was completely and thoroughly, without any question, righteous. Because He had not been righteous, He would have died for His own sins. Amen. And He did that for us while we were still sinners. Can you see and do you hear that your only chance that you have is to say, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, be my master. Jesus, save my soul. I turn from my sins. I repent of my evil ways. And I ask you, have mercy on me. Dear Lord Jesus, let me be born again. They had all kinds of questions for Jesus. They had all kinds of issues for Jesus. We come down to this one today. Can you see? Do you hear? Do you need a Savior? If you do, come down and accept Christ. Can you see? Do you hear? Talking to Christians. I wonder how many of us probably need to be working a little hard at the door. Anybody here? Yes. Can you see? Do you hear? The altar's open for you. Can you see? Do you hear? Can you see? What we need to see it here is <coughs> Jesus is God in the flesh. Father, we do ask that you would have your way in this invitation. Father, that you would reveal to anyone here that doesn't know you like they should, that they need to come down here and find out what they need to do to be saved. Maybe, maybe they just thought they were supposed to follow a good man or a good teacher. Might they have seen that these Pharisees and Sadducees and Herodians missed it because they didn't see who you were, Jesus Christ was, is, and always will be God. And He was with us. And He died for us. Anyone here has never made this man, this God man, Jesus, the Master of the Life, might they come now and do just that. And for the rest of us, those of us that have, Lord, that we might serve You stronger because we remember today again just who You are. Father, also bless our prayer revival that's coming up that we might be revived and souls might be saved. As a result, in Jesus' name we pray.